In this video we are moving into the assembly of the T9 Automo blocks and we're specifically going to be working on a sub-assembly of the front end of the T9. So if you remember an assembly is when you're putting all the parts together that you made an inventor inside an assembly. But a sub-assembly is like for example with the front, we'll assemble the front, the rims, the tires, and the axles just for the front. And then we'll do a separate one for the middle passenger section, and then a separate one for the rear bed subassembly. So each one of those is a subassembly. So we'll have three separate ones, and then we'll put them all together at the very end to create one final assembly of the entire T9. So let's jump into the front subassembly. And before we can actually start assembling, I need you to go grab two part files that I'm going to give you. So you're going to navigate to our V drive. You'll see an Automo Blocks folder in there. And in that folder, you're going to see two part files. One is called the one block socket. And then if you hold control and left click, you can also select the two block socket. And then you can just simply right click open and open those in Inventor. After they have opened up, do a save as into your T9 Automo Blocks. Now you can't just copy paste these because I have them set up as read only. You have to open them and do a save as into your T9 folder. After you've done that, we can go do a file new. And we're working our way down now. We're going to do an assembly here. Standard inch IEM. I'm going to hit create. And the first thing I'm going to start doing is placing in my first object, which is going to be the front. So I can go ahead and navigate to my folder, click on the front and hit open. I'm going to left click once, hit escape, and remember we always right click and ground that first part that we're bringing in. So that thing is locked in at zero zero now and it can't move. So now I can start bringing in all my other parts. So I'm going to go place. I'm going to bring in two axles. So I'm going to hit open, left click, left click, hit escape, place again, and we're going to get a rim left click two times because we need two of those place in the tires get two of those and then we need the two block socket which is the part that I just gave you so I'm gonna open that up or place that in right there alright now before we get started I did notice an issue that I had with the axle when I was practicing this sub assembly before I made this video and the problem is that it's not long enough. So this part does not accommodate the overall depth of our rim there. So we need to make some adjustments to that axle. Now when I make adjustments, it's automatically going to update this assembly. It'll update the part file, everything that I have associated with that axle. So that's kind of nice. And the other thing that's cool is you could do it right inside of your assembly right here. So I don't have to go open and then go navigate and open the axle. I can actually do it right here. If you double click on the axle, notice everything else becomes transparent. And now I'm actually editing just the axle part file inside of the assembly. And if you notice over here in the browser, everything else is grayed out except for the axle because I'm currently working in that part file inside the assembly. So I'm going to expand my revolve uh, feature here. And I'm going to double click on the sketch because we need to make some changes to some dimensions. I'm going to zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the 0.19 dimensions. Now there's two of them. And we're going to change both of those to 0.42. So double click on this one. Change that to 0.42. You can hit enter. And I'm just going to move that dimension a little bit so you can see that. And then I'm going to change this 0.19 also to 0.42 and hit enter. It's looking a little funky, but we got, let's change the 0.88s. There's two of those as well. I'm going to do the top one first. So I'm going to double click that. That should be 1.11. Hit enter. I'm going to do the same thing for the other 0.88 right here. Double click on that. That should also be 1.11. Hit enter. So we changed the 0.19s to 0.42s and the 0.88s to 1.11. The other dimension that I want to change is this diameter 0.3 dimension. So I'm going to double click on that and that should be 0.34. I'm going to hit enter. And then that should be everything. 
go ahead and just double check make sure that you changed everything and make sure everything matches mine so now I can hit finish sketch and you'll notice right away it updated the part as well as the other duplicate that I had over here so now if I go and double click back on the assembly over here it'll get me back into the assembly and out of that part file so now I'm back in the assembly and now I can start constraining so first thing we got to do is constrain the axle to the hole here so I'm gonna go constrain and I'm gonna use an insert constraint because that uses a cylindrical the center of a cylindrical shape as well as an edge and I'm going to use a posed so I want this edge right here so I'm gonna left click that one and I want it opposed to this edge so just like that and then hit apply I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side I want this edge right there left click that opposed to this edge and now I have that axle over there and I'm gonna hit apply so now my axles are on let's go ahead and put the rim on the axle so to do that I'm gonna use an insert constraint again and I want to use this outer edge of this hole with the center and I want to constrain that and now I got to orbit around and you got to really zoom in here and you're gonna to want to constrain that to this inside be careful because you don't want to grab this one you want to grab that one and then you can constrain that hit apply I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side so I'm gonna click on this edge right here orbit and actually I already got it right there I want that to be constrained to this edge right there so now that is constrained I can hit apply and now I got my tires I'm sorry my rims are constrained now I'm onto the tires and for this one I'm going to use an insert again because I'm going to use an edge and a center but this time I want to use an aligned because I want the front edge of the rim or tire to be flush with the front edge of the rim right here so to do this I'm just gonna click on the front edge somewhere let's say of this rectangular shape right here on the bottom one of those will be fine any one of them but you want to get the front edge right there and then I want that to align with this outer edge right here and I'm gonna hit apply now I know that you can see those little rubber parts but technically this tire would expand a little bit because it's made out of rubber so it has some flexibility but for our assembly purposes you are going to see a little bit of that intersection right there um, based off of the sizes that we did okay so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side I'm gonna just click on Oh, I gotta hit apply for the last one I'm gonna click on this edge right here and I'm gonna click on this edge here hit apply so I got the tires in last thing I gotta do is the uh, two block this two block uh, socket here and I need to constrain it to the front and I also did find a little bit of a mistake with this one when I was assembling it I noticed that the measurements were off a little bit so we're gonna make a few, we're gonna make two changes to this front piece so double click on the front piece now I'm in that part file specifically notice how everything else is transparent and now I can make changes to the front right here in the assembly now I specifically want to focus on that cutout in the back it's right here It was extrusion 2 for me so I'm going to hover over that and I'm gonna double click on the sketch and now I'm in the sketch for that part and the change that I need to make is I need to change this to 0.385 and I also want to change this to 0.385 so I made those two changes and now I can finish the sketch and it'll automatically update but now I want to get out of the part and back into the assembly so remember you got to double click on the assembly over here in the model browser so I'm going to double click that and now I'm back into the assembly so now I can constrain this to this now this should sit flush in there so we're mainly going to be using the outer edges of this lip that you see on the front to constrain it 
So I'm going to go ahead and constrain first off. Let's say this face right here, I'm using a mate constraint. So I'm going to click there and then I'm going to click here. And I don't like what that did. I'm going to undo that. Cancel this. I'm going to hit the home button. This thing is orientated backwards, so what I'm going to do to help me out a little bit is I'm going to do a free rotate. So I clicked on it, and I'm going to do a free rotate, and I'm just going to notice I'm hovering over this line. I'm just going to turn it a little bit and kind of orientate it, and then this way. It doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of the way you want it orientated, so something like that. So there we go. Then I'm going to hit Escape. Now let me get around here. Okay. Let's try this again. Constrain. I'm going to do a make constraint. I'm going to use the this left face over here this time. And I'm using the lip. Notice which face I'm on. I'm not on this one. I'm on this part. All right. And then I'm going to go here. There we go. Hit apply. Then I'm going to get the top edge, or top face I should say, top face, to, whoops, orbit this top face right here. There we go, hit apply. Now the last one that I have to do is a flush. So I'm going to change this, and the front face of the double block uh, socket, so I'm going to click there. I'm going to click the face of the front piece right here. And then now I'm going to hit apply and it should be fully constrained. So remember the test to see if stuff has been constrained correctly is to click and drag. So when I click on that it doesn't do anything. When I click on the base it doesn't do anything. When I click the tires notice it rotates which is fine. Same thing with the rim. Same thing with the axle. So you can test your parts to see if you have constrained it properly. All right, and that is it for the front subassembly. So you can go ahead and do a save. Oh shoot, I forgot to name this and save it. So I'm gonna do a save. Should have done this in the beginning, whoops. And we're gonna call this T9 front subassembly. That was bad practice by my part. You should be saving right away in the beginning. If you ever get this message that pops up, always say yes to all and then click OK. Anytime that ever pops up. Alright, so now in the next video, we will do the middle uh, sub, or the passenger sub assembly.